Today, I continue my conversation with Marnie Hammer about hearing God's voice. If you haven't listened to part one yet, you might want to go back and listen to that part first. Hi, friend. You're listening to Find Hope Here. I'm your host, Teresa Whiting, author, speaker, ministry leader, friend, and fellow struggler. This is a podcast about the messy, complicated, painful parts of life, but also the beautiful, joy-filled hope that Jesus promises. Each week, we dig deep into God's Word together and talk about how His truth impacts our everyday lives. I'm not going to ask you to sit with me and have coffee because I seem to have my best conversations while I'm just doing life. So I'd love to hang out with you as you walk or fold laundry or drive to work. You're invited to join me in pursuing the hope God promises. No matter where you are or where you've been, I pray you always find hope here. Let's jump in to today's episode. I feel like the the listeners are saying, Yes. And yes. And I want that. I want that freedom. I want to, to lean in and hear him. So let's get to the, how, like, how do you hear his voice? What would give us some, not a checklist. We don't want a checklist, checklist. but what does it look like in real life to hear from him? So I think that the most important thing is when we can sit and know that he speaks right there is something that happens when we get past the doubt and the wondering and truly know without a doubt yes he will speak to me he has spoken to let's let's list the people in the bible right if he is an unchanging god then who he is to the people in the Bible that we know and love and read their stories and are encouraged by. Same God for us. And so we can look to those as evidences and we see in his word promises that he will speak to us. I, um, I'll read a couple that I think are helpful to just stand on. But I think that this is this is the most important step because when we're listening for him, what we're doing is we're posturing our hearts towards him and we're opening ourselves up. So we don't hear him here, right? We don't hear him in our ears. We hear him deep where he is Mm. and in the places where we're meeting with him, right? As a believer in Jesus, I have his Holy Spirit in me. He resides in me. And that means his spirit is in my spirit, right? Like we are communing together, but we have to choose that. And so what we do is posture our hearts towards him and know that we will hear him. And we build our faith by standing on the scriptures that say he speaks. And so I'll read you some. Okay. So we know this one in James, um, James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It is a promise. We're choosing him. He is waiting and he will come. It is that, um, that first, then second, right? Step one, step two. So there's some steps draw near to him. That is so encouraging to know when we do, he's there. He's right there waiting in Jeremiah. Uh, 29, 13. I wish you could see how far I'm holding my paper from me. (laughs) This is ridiculous. (laughs) Uh, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And the, the promise of seeking and finding, we see it in through the entire Bible. I remember the song, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this. So we know, but do we know that we know, right? In Deuteronomy, we're promised, and it's all through the Bible. Seek me, you'll find me. He's not hiding. And then in Psalms, over and over and over, it pro- he we have different Psalms that promise us that when we call, he will answer. I just read it again this morning. Which one was I reading? Psalm 91. It's in there. Um, one of my favorite ones is Psalm 138, and I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation, which mm. is super fun. 
at the very moment I called out to you, you answered me. And then this is the part. Oh, this is so good. You strengthened me deep within my soul. So that's what we were just talking about, right? When we meet him and we're quiet and we're still, we're opening up these places that other people don't meet, right? Like this is only for Jesus, this deep place in my soul. You strengthen me deep within my soul. What an encouragement that he's going to strengthen us. And one of the things that amazes me about a promise to strengthen is that's not a fruit of the spirit. He's not strengthening me so I can strengthen you, Teresa, right? He is strengthening me for me, for him. That's amazing. That promise blows my mind. And then the rest of that verse is, um, so I'll start over. You strengthened me deep within my soul and breathed fresh courage into me. Mm. And that breath is so intimate, right? Just like in Genesis, when he breathed life into Adam and the Holy Spirit comes is breathed into us, right? And this again, he breathes courage into us. So there's just so many promises that tell us he's going to meet us. We seek him, we will find him. And when we know it, we will show up with him differently. When we really know, we don't doubt, yes, this is truth. He can meet us because we're putting away any other things that might distract or make us doubt. I want to point out something that you said, Marnie, you said he's not hiding. And, oh, I, you know, we hear things like, I wish I understood God's will, or I, I'm trying to discern or discover. Honestly, I have come in my in my study of scripture to really believe with all my heart that God's will is for us to be close to him, to be intimate with him. I mean, all through the Old Testament. I mean, first of all, creation, we were created to walk with him face to face. And then all through the Old Testament, he's like, I'm going to dwell with you. I, you're going to be my people and I'm going to be your God. And then in the New Testament, he's like, actually, I'm going to come down and be, walk among you. And then when I leave, I'm going to live inside of you. It's like, it, he wants us to be with him. Like he's not hiding, he's pursuing the whole Bible, I feel like the whole story from Genesis three onward, when we, when we turned our backs on him, the whole story is God coming after his kids and saying, come back, come back, be with me. So when you said he's not hiding, I just wanted to cheer and be like, no, he's not to hide. He, he's looking for us. He's, he's saying, where are you? Come back to me. And all, you know, you hear Jesus over and over, come to me, come to me. And so I know you had more scriptures to share. I, I just wanted to put that in there, but what else um, can you share about that? Whether it's scriptures or just things that you've learned on your own. I have so many thoughts. Help me stay organized. Okay, Teresa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when we know, if we know that we know that we know, yes, he's going to speak to us, then that shifts who we are and how we show up with him, right? That shifts our expectations. We're going to go into meeting with him from a completely different starting place. Mm. I know you're going to speak, right? One of the things that, um, well, it is um, a very well-known scripture. And when um, in John, when Jesus is talking about how his sheep know his voice, right? I just want to read that. Um, so the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name, which is like, how intimate is that, right? He knows Teresa. He knows Marnie. He knows every single one of us so intimately. And he leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, then he goes before them. And the sheep follow them, follow him, for they know his voice. Um, have you seen on YouTube, if you do a quick search, there is a shepherd who he has gathered, I'm assuming it's a group of tourists and the tourists are all calling the sheep. And of course the sheep are completely ignoring them because they don't know how to call sheep. They've never called sheep in their lives. Right. And then the shepherd comes out and not only does he like, okay, this is how it's done, but he has this special call that it's not, Hey, sheepy sheep. I mean, it is, it's a, such a unique call. Mm -hmm. And the sheep don't like, like my dog, just look up and be like, I heard you. No, they like 
came with enthusiasm. And as I was watching this video, I just had these tears because their knowledge of his voice was not only so familiar and so intimate, but they were like, yes, he's here. And they came running. And so when I, every time I read this and I hear this encouragement that we know his voice, I think of that visual because doubt can creep in or there are, there can be quiet moments. So there can be, I mean, I don't hear him every time I seek to hear him, but I know he speaks and I know his voice and I expect that I will hear him maybe not today, I'll try again tomorrow, or it's going to be through a different means. It's just, there's no room for doubt when you know his voice. And it's so encouraging. Can you share an example of a time where you specifically were like, he was talking to me in this moment? I mean, I'm sure that there's many, many times, but can you share just one simple example of that? I think, I mean, I think the Lord just brought this to mind. Um, this one shows the flaw of humanity. <laughs> this one is like, yeah, Marnie didn't nail it, but um, I was coming, this was during COVID and I was coming out of my grocery store and I, to this day, will always park by the, what are they called? The grocery cart stalls, right? Like yeah. where you return them because mm -hmm. of all the years of having little people that I strapped in and then I didn't want to leave the car because I, so I, yeah, so I'm parked right next to one and there's a woman there. There's no other cars right by me. And there's a woman there and she has a lot of bags. And I was like, oh, well, she did a lot of shopping, but, but I don't think it registered to me immediately. There's no car here. But I was like, okay, I see her. And I put my card away. And then I heard the Lord say, ask if she needs help. And I was like, it's COVID. <laughs> we're not supposed to be near people, right? Like, we're like, you know, and I get in my car and I hear it again. Ask if she needs help. And I was like, well, I mean, asking if she needs help, that's not committing much, right? So right. I <laughs> go over and I'm, I'm just asked her, you know, excuse me, man, do you, do you need help? And she looked at me and I could tell same thing, like COVID, like you're a stranger. Like it's this whole, like that was hard, wasn't it? And she looked at me and she said, I'm just walking. And she had all of her bags on her arms at this point. Right. I'm, I'm just walking. She didn't answer my question. Right. But I had a choice to make. And I was like, Lord, you knew <laughs> she does not have a car. Okay. And so I said, do you need a ride somewhere? And oh my goodness, the distance that she was going to walk with all those groceries was ridiculous. She would not get in my front seat because COVID. She got in the back and she put all of her groceries like in her lap. She tried to keep herself so small and contained. And in the process of taking her where she needed to go, I asked her, you know, I don't, I don't even know how it came up, but, but she, I remember so specifically that she had just moved here with her daughter from Texas. She knew no one. She didn't have a car and her daughter was going to children's for a surgery that was not available in Texas. And she, like, it makes me cry to this day because this woman stepped out in such faith to just move to where I live to go receive health care for her daughter. It's clear from where she lived that it was a struggle. And I got her to where she was and I said, can I help you take them up? And she said, no, like, no, she did not want that. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm so happy to have met you. Um, and so she had her groceries and she was, she was good. This woman was so strong and so dear. And I got back in my car and I was like, I never even asked her name. Mm. I was so like caught in this, like, I'm trying to make conversation. I did not do this perfectly. I was, I, God had asked me two times, go ask her to ask, you know, and, and I got back in the car and I was like, I didn't ask her name. And he said, it's okay. I know her name. Mm. He said, I know her name and I gave her a ride and I was like, okay, this is the most beautiful example 
of using flawed humanity, <laughs> but also an example of when we're listening for him in quiet places, we're also going to start to hear him in places that are loud, like at my grocery store, right? Like mm. when we're practicing seeking him and being still with him, we know his voice well enough to hear it as you're putting the grocery cart away. And I pray that that's an encouragement, even in the face of not being perfect in walking it out. <laughs> that is, that is, it is, it is a beautiful example. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And then also thank you for listening because there, there have been times, honestly, when I feel like I've heard those similar things, like go talk to that person. And I'm like, I think that's just the voice in my head. I don't think that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, I, I struggle with some of those exact things, those scenarios that you're talking about, but to hear like how God used you, you know, and you planted a seed and you might never know the result, but, yeah. but the fact that you showed kindness to this woman in a new town who had no friends and was in a, obviously a hard place. Like what a beautiful thing. And what a beautiful example of listening, like just God said something and you did it. So thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Marnie, is there anything else that you want to add? Cause we're getting ready to close up and get your book recs and you know, share all the ways that people connect with you. But is there anything else um, that you just wanted to add to what it means to hear him louder? Yeah, actually, I have a couple of quick thoughts that maybe they're more practical. Um, because I think this idea of listening for him, it's okay, that sounds great. But when you sit down to do it, it's that's weird. Like that feels weird. Like, okay, where do I start? I don't even know. And so just some practical thoughts on sitting with him. What does that even look like? Um, one of the things that I really have grown to love doing is kind of looking at my week and, and looking for a little pocket of time that I can just know that's going to be a space when it's just me and Jesus. I'm going to hold that space. Mm. Sometimes we're going to seek him in really urgent moments. Right. And that's going to happen. The more that we seek to hear him, um, we're going to sit with him in like unplanned moments. That's just reality of life. But as we start out, this rhythm of kind of holding a space is probably a really, um, a, it would be a more comfortable way to step into sitting with Jesus. And so what I would say is when you identify a time also determine where. And so for me, my ki my kids know if mom's in that chair, she's sitting with Jesus and we're going to give her space. They can interrupt me. Absolutely. But they just know that's, that's my Jesus space or outside. I, I, okay. Ooh, five different thoughts popped into my head. So I'm going to try to line them up. We do hear him differently because we are all wired differently. And so some of us are going to be able to meet with him in still quiet moments. And some of us are going to be like, uh, right. Like it's a really hard thing to sit still. So go take a walk, but don't listen to a podcast. Talk to him, right? Move your body, but hold space in your brain, right? There is, um, there, there is a breadth of different ways that we can seek him. If you know, you meet him in the woods, go to the woods. If you know in your car is a really good spot, because I have done that one, right? Especially when I had little people, I am going to make sure they're all safe. And I'm just going to sit in my car in the garage for 10 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So identify places that work for you. Think about ways and um, locations where you already feel connected with Jesus. And then look for ways to build and put those together and Think of that time with him when you're praying with him as an appointment, just like going to the dentist. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to go. And we can approach that in the same way where we hold it and prioritize it and sit with him. And then from there, um, I actually have a resource that is a prayer planning worksheet and those steps are already on there. But then what you're going to do is sit and write down before you even start praying the things that you're struggling with. I can't tell you the number of times that I haven't 
I, I, I've been holding a struggle in my brain and have forgotten to talk to Jesus about it. Why? Why have I not invited him into it? But if I take this time and I think about what's keeping me up, what am I praying about before I hit the pillow? What are the things that I'm just oh, cycling over and, and processing, right? I just want to capture those. And then pick one, just pick one and go and talk to Jesus and ask him questions. And when you're asking him questions, you stop and listen. Because I think one of the things I never knew was to pause and hold space and stop talking. And so we're listening and we're going to just write down what you're sensing. Don't analyze it. Just write it down. And then you pull out your Bible and you look for ways that what you sensed, you look for um, scriptures that support and um, correlate and build on those things. What you're doing is making sure that everything lines up because his character and who he is comes through the scriptures and we can know that what we hear will never contradict what's in our Bibles. That is so good. That's so good. Actually, um, about a week ago, I downloaded that resource and I took it with me to the beach and I, I was surprised at how many things I had to write down that I was like, why, like, why have I not been praying about these things? Why have I just been stewing over them? And to really make that space was, that was so helpful. So we are going to link that in the show notes because I know you're offering that to the listeners and I yeah. appreciate that. It's such a great resource. Um, you know, I always ask people what, what are their favorite reads? And, you know, it doesn't have to be about hearing God louder. It could be any book that you're, that you're reading and enjoying. Ah, uh, so are you like me where you have a list of to be read books and, and they just sit uh, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have a stack I, next to my bed, like of 10 books. Yes. And I have probably six books going at once because yeah. So yeah, it's, um, I have so many ideas, but I am going to actually, um, tell you the, like the biggest ones that I keep thinking and recommending to people that I keep thinking on. So one book that I am literally in the middle of, and I am, it, it is like, it's like a visit to the beach, truly. I mean, you look at the cover and you probably feel that. This is brand new. Jody Grubbs Live Slowly. Have you? Um, I have this not one up seen yet, it. No. Look how far I am. I started it this week. Wow. This is so good. The subhead is a gentle invitation to exhale. It's fantastic. Mm. Yes. So I would highly recommend this. And, you know, I'm seeing a theme actually, because look at this one, sacred rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so apparently I need a little rest. We go on vacation next week and I am going to the beach and that's clearly something I need to do. So yeah, this is Sandra Dalton Smith. If you are not following her, go follow her. She's amazing. Um, but sacred rest is all the different kinds of rest we need. And it's fantastic. Mm. Eye opening. So good. And then this one, this is by Jen Michelle. This book is. Oh, say say the name of it for the oh, listener. In good time. Sorry, I didn't say it. Yes. In good time by Jen Pollock Michelle. This book's incredible every page I have underlined, I have dog-eared, I have, there is so much wisdom in here. She talks about, if you look at the table of contents, um, it's in two parts and it's, the first part is all about time anxiety. And then the second part is on time faith. Mm. It's so good. So again, there's kind of a theme with these books. I like it. I like that. Yeah. Um, also, Marnie, how can people connect with you? I hang out on Instagram. You can definitely find me there. Just Marnie Hammer. Hammer is spelled A-R at the end. That is a little tricky theme. H-A-M-M-A-R. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then I, um, my website is MarnieHammer.com. And I also am on Facebook, Marnie Hammer Great. Writer. 
So um, as we close up, I would love for you to speak directly to the listener who, who is listening and saying, this is all fine and wonderful, but it's a little weird. And I, I don't know that I have ever done this. And this is a new concept to me of just listening. Like, how do I know it's not just my own head and all the things that we, that keep us from doing this. So would you address that listener directly? Absolutely. I mean, I was in that space. That was me. I remember um, this, I didn't go into the story, um, but the story for my own experience was my husband heard the Lord speak something that was a promise to us about selling our home in Boston. And I literally looked at him and this was on the heels of that hard season. And I said, how did you hear that? I so wanted to believe what he heard and the Lord, oh, he was so faithful to over deliver on that promise. He showed himself so clearly and so big. And so perhaps that's the encouragement that I can offer this, this listener who is wondering, I didn't know. And the Lord showed me himself. And in Deuteronomy 429, it says that we will find him when we seek him with all of our heart and all of our soul, when we are seeking him from those deep places, he will reveal himself. He has promised it. Thank you so much, Marnia. You, you've you been such an encouragement to, to me and to our listeners. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you'll take the time to connect with Marnie and to download the resource that she has provided. That prayer guide is so helpful. If you've been around a while, and if you haven't yet left a five-star rating and review, please do that today. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for hanging out with me today on Find Hope Here. To find anything we mentioned on the episode, go to teresawhiting.com slash listen, which is where you can find the show notes. In closing, I want to leave you with this prayer from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope.